Hi, so what we have here is the Hawthorne. Now, the Hawthorne's a really good example of a time when it's important to remember the use of scientific names. The scientific name for Hawthorne is Crataegus monogyna. The reason for that is because it has three common names. Mostly it's known as the Hawthorne, but it can be known as the Quickthorn and the Maythorn in certain parts of the country. And that's because in May, the blossom comes out and associated with that time. So that's where we can remember the scientific name, so we're all talking about the same plant. But yeah, this is the Hawthorne. Now, it's noticeable for its thorns, that's the key indicator. There's only probably two other trees you're gonna confuse us with when identifying it, which is the blackthorn or the crab apple, which both have thorns as well. So if you see thorns on a kind of scrubby tree, it's most likely gonna be one of those three. Following our method, let's go back to asking the tree those questions. Are the buds opposite or are they alternate? With Hawthorne, they are alternate. You can see them climbing up the stick here. And the buds are small and brown, sometimes a bit pointed, sometimes a bit rounded. The buds don't stand out. One of the other key things, of course, being a thorn, is looking for the spikes, the thorns. Now, you don't always see them straight away. This branch here doesn't have any thorns on until you get further down, and there's some here. So if you don't see thorns straight away on a tree and you are identifying it, and you think it might be a hawthorn, grab a different branch and have another look. So let's have a look down uh, here at this one. Looking at this branch here, we can see there's some really wicked thorns here. That's telling us that, that it is a hawthorn. Generally, I've seen the, the thorns on black thorns tend to be um, a little bit longer or round, a little bit more wicked, though these are pretty sharp themselves. Comparing the two, hawthorn tends to be a kind of brown, green bark, whereas hawthorn tend, sorry, blackthorn tends to be a dark purple. There's another key indicator you can use for hawthorn even at this time of year in winter is there might well be some berries still hanging on. Now there's a bright scarlet berry left over there, can you see that? And of course in autumn these hawthorns are absolutely abundant with them and they're great food, winter food for birds. And uh, the trees are dispersed by birds eating them and then uh, plopping out the uh, seeds somewhere else in the woodland. And so we have some of them hanging on here. At this time of year, it's January now, these are generally not going to be scarlet like this, they're going to be much more um, dark, dark, dark crimson, really dull red, even black and shriveled. So you can look out for those hanging on still on the tree, good indicator of hawthorn, not blackthorn. So let's take a closer look at the bark here. You can see that as the bark ages, it gets all fissured. And you can see that here, all those vertical lines running up and down the trunk. The bark has a grey green tinge to it. Here in wet Wales, I see a lot of lichens and mosses growing on the bark. They seem to really like hawthorn. The younger bark on this branch is much smoother. So like so many tree species, the bark of the hawthorn cracks with age. Also, look out for the odd thorn jutting out of the main trunk as well. You might well see that. So one other thing we want to check are the leaves on the ground that's going to help us identify what tree this is. Now looking around, there are actually a few I've spotted. Here's some hawthorn leaves here. Not the beautiful spring green that we'd expect in uh, March. But there's some of the, uh, the old leaves from this last year. Still hanging around actually, but they're not in abundance. So I wouldn't rely on this as an indicator, but if you suspect it's hawthorn, you could look underneath and look out for some of these, and they are hanging on in winter on the ground there. Very distinctive leaf. So now we're looking at the hawthorn from a distance, trying to get our eye in on the silhouette. We can see there's nothing neat about the hawthorn. It is a scrubby, kind of messy, tangly tree. Um, that's why it's so good for hedgerows. And often it's multi-stemmed like this one is here. You do find it single stemmed, but often it can be multi-stemmed as well. And you can see you've got old growth, new growth, all tangled around. And it's quite a shrubby tree. It's not gonna grow that high, but this is very typical of the maximum height of the species. A 
During the 16th to 18th centuries, during the Enclosure Acts, hawthorns were planted in Britain in their thousands because they make fantastic impenetrable barriers for stock and for marking boundaries. And that's why we see hawthorn along with blackthorn in such abundance in hedgerows still today. So what's hawthorn like as firewood? Well, it's a very dense, heavy wood. It doesn't split easily. It's not an easy one to handle as firewood because of the thorns, so watch out for that. But if someone is taking one down and you want to take it firewood, it does burn hot, it burns long, it's good, solid fuel. Now, hawthorn is one of the first trees to come into leaf in the spring and it explodes into leaf spectacularly. And it's the one that you'll often see on roadsides when you see that lovely, beautiful spring, fresh green, that is hawthorn. Alongside that, you'll see the white blossom of the blackthorn side by side in hedgerows and along motorway uh, roadsides across Britain. So that is the hawthorn tree in winter. Now it's over to you, not only to identify it for yourself, but also to share with me any stories you have about hawthorn trees, um, any hawthorn lore that you know that I might have missed out in this video. Stick that in the comments below and I'll learn from you and so will our community too. Now, don't forget of course, it really helps us out if you give this video a like and also to subscribe to the channel and share it with others who would love it too. And if you wanna dive even deeper into Tree ID, then I have a whole course. It's called the Complete Tree ID Course. There's a free taster version of that course available for you to check out. You can find that in the link in the description below this video. Thanks again for giving us your time and appreciate you watching and we'll see you soon in the woods. Happy tree hunting. Thank you.